The European Parliament is not only a house of European democracy, it has also been my political base for four years. So here I feel at home, I feel among friends. Sadly, our fellow Europeans in Ukraine cannot say the same. They are fighting for their homeland, for their loved ones, their freedom to choose their own destiny. The Ukrainian armed forces are putting up a fierce resistance that President Putin did not expect. Putin's war has also left ordinary Russians without access to the truth. They are living in isolated infospace. We thought that in times of the internet, this could no longer be possible, but it is. Our task is to break the wall of lies. It is a complicated task. We need to mobilize our technological potential to win the war for truth. I would also like to address the Russian people directly. Dear Russian friends, the European Union is not acting against you. Our measures are intended to isolate President Putin and his government, which is conducting a brutal war against Ukraine. You are now seeing only the beginnings of deprivation, which will become much worse as our sanctions kick in. Your government is already instituting practices that are familiar to me from the Soviet times, like censorship, like threatening journalists with the 15-year prison sentences for speaking about the war, like rationing for foodstuffs, like asking teachers to report on the political sympathies of their pupils and their parents. Global companies are pulling out of Russia. Airlines are no longer flying. You can no longer use your Visa and MasterCards. None of this is directed against you. It is directed against President Putin and his government. We understand that it hurts you, but it also hurts us. It hurts you because autocrat does not care for the people. He only cares for his power. That is something that is so hard to understand in a democratic world. Dear Russian friends, we continue to hope for a democratic and stable Russia that is respectful of its neighbors and is governed by a rule of law. President Putin's invasion of Ukraine has ushered in a period of insecurity on our continent that we have not seen since the 1939. And like we saw after the Second World War, our world will not return to the status quo ante. Russia's relationship with the outside world will be different. How to restore the trust in respecting international law and order? European attitudes towards security will be different and our institutional setups will need to adjust. The EU has acted with an urgency, conviction and unity that has surprised President Putin and the world. And dare, dare I say, we have also surprised ourselves. We have indeed acted as a geopolitical union. Our citizens have responded as well by opening their pocketbooks and their hearts, by welcoming refugees, often into their own homes, by volunteering on humanitarian missions, by collecting food, clothing and medicines for those fleeing the war. Our citizens are showing a generosity of spirit that makes me proud to be Estonian and proud to be European. I know a bit about kindness of uh, strangers. As many of you know, I am the child of deportees whom Stalin sent away to Siberia. My mother was just six months old when she was deported on a cattle car along with her mother and grandmother to what the Estonians call the cold land. It was a stranger who gave my grandmother a jar of milk that kept my mother alive during this journey. So you could say uh, we Estonians have some experience in being deported and fleeing wars. And we also have some experience with Russia, which we have been trying to share with the European Union since we joined. It was 78 years ago today when the Red Army bombed my home city, Tallinn, to the ground. 
But my mother, the same baby who took her first trip abroad to Siberia, always taught me that it was impolite to say, I told you so. Putin will come to test us, and yes, we will have to resist. That means that we need to keep supporting those fighting for Ukraine's independence while giving time for the sanctions and isolating measures to work to their full capacity. Ukraine came under attack in 2014 because it wanted to join the European Union. It came under armed attack on the 24th of February because it seeks to take its rightful place among us. It is in our interest that Ukraine becomes more stable, more prosperous and solidly founded on the rule of law. I know from Estonia's own experience that this is how it works. But it's not only in our interest to give Ukraine a membership perspective, it is also our moral duty to do so. Ukraine is not fighting for Ukraine, it's also fighting for Europe. If not now, then when? I thank you for your attention.